despite its tiny size, this infrared thermometer is incredibly useful. I'm going to tear it down, but before that, let's have a look at some details. Hey guys, just a quick video this evening. I wanted to show you a very cheap and compact tool, which you can see on the screen now. It's one of these little um, infrared thermometers. These are very compact and um, they're very useful when doing electrical design or troubleshooting um, issues in electrical designs, specifically thermal issues, of course. Um, and they can be very handy to get in close and just measure uh, the temperature of even individual components and heat sinks and things like that. Um, so I wanted to show you uh, where I got mine from, uh, a few of the stats and the information about the device and finally of course we'll do a teardown as well. This is the Hobby King website and this is where I purchased mine from. Now I bought mine probably about four months ago or so, four or five months and it was $13.50 back then so it's gone up in price a few dollars but I think it's still worth the $18 Australian in this case. Um, you can see it's a Turnigy brand device. Um, it's a rebadge though. I'll show you some more information on that in a second. Its measurement range is negative 33 to 220 degrees Celsius or negative 27.4 to 428 Fahrenheit. Um, now you can see its uh, accuracy is 2.5 degrees C or 2.5 percent over its full range. Um, so it's not it's not useful for very like accurate readings. It's more useful for getting a ballpark figure or for doing relative sort of readings between components and things. Um, I also will speak about that uh, in a second as well. So it says distance from 2 to 40 centimeters. I think what they're saying there is it's sort of like it's effective measurement range because um, because this is an infrared uh, sensor and in this case its ratio is 1 to 1 which means um, if you're 1 meter away the sample size will be a 1 meter circle. Um, but you can essentially take this thing and just like wave it in the air and take an infrared measurement of nothing, right? Um, or a kilometre away. It just means that the spread is going to be so large it's, it becomes impractical. So I think um, their distance measurement there, the distance specification is more about what's practical to use this thing in. You know, you go back 40 centimetres and you're getting a 40 centimetre spot. Um, it's still sort of useful at that range. Um, generally with these things, because, because of such a wide spread, you want to get it as close as possible to the device or whatever you're measuring. Um, its emissivity range is um, default to 0 0.95, which is standard for all sort of infrared thermometers and infrared devices. Um, but it's adjustable from 0 0.05 all the way up to 1. So just a quick word on emissivity. Emissivity is essentially how reflective something is for infrared light. Um, e emissivity of, of 0 would be a perfect mirror. Um, you're only going to ever get reflected infrared, you're not actually going to get the infrared from the device itself, so to speak, so um, the higher the emissivity, up to emissivity of 1, which is black body, um, that's essentially uh, no reflectance, so whatever you're measuring is emanating from that surface itself, you can get very accurate readings. Um, in general, most sort of painted flat matte surfaces are around 0.95, so you can get a pretty good reading. If it's a chrome or shiny metal, you're going to end up reading um, reflected infrared, so you're not going to get a, an accurate reading. Um, and actually, I'll just just a quick detour here. I'll show you these things. These are infrared labels, and um, I do a lot of controls engineering and building automation, those sort of things. And oftentimes, these things will be used on plant equipment. So we have an infrared camera um, in the workshop. It's quite expensive, but it's a full camera, full resolution and uh, it allows you to take photographs and these labels here they, they're done in star and circle and triangle shapes and square shapes so that you can stick these on different parts of the plant, air conditioning plant or electrical uh, panel equipment and these sort of things. You can take a photo with the infrared camera and you can match up the shapes to different objects. So these are a guaranteed emissivity of 0 0.95 um, which again is standard like I mentioned. So by sticking these on even shiny surfaces, you put one of these labels on, you can take a photo of the label and you get a very accurate reading from that. Um, so you can see here's an example of an infrared photograph with these labels in place. Just switching back to the Hobby King page again, you see here it says it's made in Taiwan and they have a product ID. So I googled this and I found the original manufacturer, Zytemp, and there's a lot more technical data on their website. Um, 
and some very interesting stuff. Um, like they, they go through um, errors of readings and how to make more accurate readings, and they explain that um, the infrared reading itself is uh, it's a relative reading. There's a temperature reference from the device, and then they measure the infrared off of a surface. So if you have this device in extreme temperatures heated up and then cool down or whatever, it can throw out the accuracy of your readings. And in fact, the best accuracy readings are when the device temperature and the surface temperature are equal or as close together as can be. So if this is at 25 degrees, you know, normal um, sort of room temperature and you're measuring a room temperature device, that's going to be the most accurate reading you can take with this device. The further away the surface is in extreme heat or cold from the device temperature or room temperature, um, that's when your error starts to, starts to creep in more. And they actually show a little graph here showing that. So you can sort of see here it's the temperature of object and the temperature of ambient. And based on that, you, your error can go out to 1.5 degrees in this case. But obviously, the further out you go on this scale, the further um, your tolerance is going to sort of expand and creep a bit. And so um, I'll, I'll leave links to this page and the, and the Hobby King page in the description below so you can check this out in your own time. I also found this instruction manual on the Zytemp website. Um, and I'll just quickly skim through this. So basically, you can change your emissivity, um, which is awesome. You can adjust that if need be. You can also, um, it's got some error codes there, but you can also set it to be in min or max mode. So um, you can have it so it'll read out the maximum minimum temperature from the samples that you've taken, the scanning that you've taken, which is really handy. So basically, I use that a lot. So what I'll do is I'll go into one of my designs or a piece of equipment, I'll put, pop the lid, I'll put it in max mode and I'll just like wave it over the device like a wand and then I'll have a look and it'll tell me the hottest temperature that I scanned uh, in that surface. So that's really handy. You can do the same for minimum as well. Um, they sort of just explain a few other things. Here's some more specs, some more detailed specs perhaps. Um, and they also explain just to be careful of EMC and RFI because it can, if you go near really noisy, crazy um, interference, it'll throw the, the numbers out a bit. So let's tear this thing down. You can see my cutting mat here has uh, interval lines here of one centimeter. So you can see this thing's just under six centimeters tall, very compact. It's a really nifty device. I really like this. Um, so you hit the button to turn it on and take your first reading. And it basically takes readings as you're holding the button down. You can see it's updating. And when I release, you can sort of have a look. So if you need to reach into a case, you can take your reading, take the thing out, and you have a look at the screen, and that's what you're reading there. Very nifty. Um, now with the mode, so for example, if I put this on maximum, as you can see there, now if I hold that button down and then put my hand in front, you see that I'm still holding the button down and it's just going to always capture the, the hottest. See that there? It's always capturing the maximum. So that's a very useful function if you're sort of looking for the hot spot in a panel or somewhere or other. Um, you can sort of hold down the button, wave this around inside an enclosure around over a circuit board and have a look and you can get your maximum temperature. Uh, it's really nifty. Um, so we're going to take this thing apart now. Um, you can see on the back it's got uh, this little door. There, there is actually a little clip here and it helps it sort of stand upwards I think. Um, I've lost that. I'm going to open this door here and that's a little battery compartment. Um, so it's a, it's a standard CR2032. It's a 3 volt. This is the battery it came with and it's a Toshiba brand which is, if it's legit, that's a very good brand. Um, so I'm going to pop that out. I'll just use the, the tweezers for that. It's a little bit tight. Um, so that's it there, and you can see it has written in there the battery type and the voltage. You can also see this label here, and it explains the sort of distance ratio of being one meter out at read a one meter dot, or five meters at five meters, basically one to one ratio. Um, don't throw it in the bin, uh, and all the other sort of things. So I'm gonna. There's only a single screw here, which I'm gonna take out now, and we'll soon discover what's inside of this. Now, a lot of these little devices are deceptively simple on the outside, but you find a lot of engineering, a lot of time goes into the building of these devices. So I'm keen to see how this thing goes together and what's inside. Um, might be another screw under here. I'm not sure. I'm just going to use the back of my tweezers here to pry this open. Oh, no, I think we got it. Single screw. So you can see that back case just came off there. 
So straight away you can see our infrared thermometer up the top here, that component is encased in a piece of uh, cast metal there. Um, we've got a, a sort of onboard chip which just has the epoxy blob over it. Looks like a capacitor there, a crystal, uh, a few other bits and pieces. We've got some like test points down the bottom here, or maybe programming pins. I'm assuming this is a microcontroller being that it has a crystal and it's got to do some min-max logic and some of the bits and pieces and, and do a display. You can also um, program in the emis em emissivity. So, uh, you know, it's got some smarts to it, which would all be happening in that blob of epoxy there. Um, interestingly, they also have the battery holder inbuilt into the back part of the enclosure. And you can see how these little spring tabs are poking out here. And they correlate with these nice big pads on the board there. Um, so it looks like we've got four more screws. Just seeing two up here and two down there. Actually, I'm having a look at this sensor too, and you can see it's got four wires. You see that component there? It's quite interesting how they've sort of sandwiched that in with a block of metal. Um, so let's keep going. Obviously got the big serial number sticker on the back as well, with a barcode on it. They might also use these little pins down the bottom here during production for calibrating the device perhaps, if it goes through a calibration phase. Alright, just move these screws out of the way. So hopefully this board just comes out. Might need a little bit of convincing. There we go. So there that comes out and then you can see these buttons here, it's just these rubberized little pads. Um, very simple construction but very effective. I really like this sort of thing, um, it's really neat. So i just put the plastic case aside. So now we've got this uh, PCB here, in actual fact I might zoom you in and see if I can focus on that a little bit better. So we're zoomed in now, you can see this is a side with a chip and if I flip this over, there's our LCD. You can also see the button pads here, and there's a bunch of little points and through holes and test points and bits and pieces. There's a capacitor here that hasn't been filled. Um, there's a little tiny IC here. Um, what's the designator on that? It says 93C46. Um, I'll look that up and I'll put some information on the screen here if I can find something on that. Um, and you can also see on this side, we've got these two screws, which are basically holding this rather heavy block of metal into the PCB and uh, that sort of encapsulates that infrared thermometer. So I'm going to take those off now and just very carefully, I don't really want to break this thing, I mean it's, it's cheap but it's, uh, yeah I really like it. So it feel, felt like there's a little bit of Loctite on those, they're quite tight excuse all the hands and the, everything in the way. So I've just unscrewed that. Yeah, I've got to be very careful here. I could very easily damage this. Okay, so there we go. So that's just slid off there. If I turn it over, you see it's hollow. There's no lens or anything in there, but you can see how it's a cone shape. And it's really chrome shiny mirror finish so that would be to focus um, the infrared into the sensor which I'll show you now so I'll just put this aside and that is solid metal um, so there's the little infrared thermometer in the end there it's very similar to the passive infrared sensor in the um, motion sensor LED lights that we've torn down recently on this channel um, but that's got four leads on it. Again, if I can get in close enough and, and see any identifiers on this part, I'll, I'll put them on the screen now. So you can see on this side of the board, on the silk screen, they've got um, just down here, it says Zytemp and 0.8 millimeter thickness. So they've, they've written that on the silk screen for some reason, but yeah, there you go. It is 0.8 millimeter thick and it's a two layer board by the looks of it. 
and TN105, which is uh, obviously the model number, and it's version 008. So this is eight revisions in, um, which is interesting. Um, and you can see they've got a zebra strip running along the LCD here, and a bit of foam underneath to stick that LCD glass down to the PCB. I'm not going to peel this off. There's, it looks like there's just a couple of little passives, little surface mount passives and things underneath. Nothing too exciting, and uh, these things can be a little bit uh, fiddly to get the connection good again, so I'm, I'm not going to uh, tempt that. I'm just going to leave that there. Um, yeah, but it's a very nifty device. I, I really like these sort of um, devices where it's all packaged and nice and compact. So that's the Zytem infrared thermometer. Very nifty little piece of kit. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.